Today's video is brought to you by Team Group's Extreme ARGB Memory, which features a unique mirror design that will certainly look great in any build, and thanks to its high frequency choices of up to 4000 MHz, you can be sure that you'll be getting the most out of your system. The Extreme ARGB comes with an XMP profile, meaning you can easily set the maximum advertised frequency of your kit in a matter of seconds. For example, right now I'm using a 32GB 3200MHz kit that is set to 2400MHz by default, and once we enable the XMP profile, we're seeing an up to 12% performance uplift in gaming scenarios. For those of you who are rocking a white setup, there is now also a white color option, and in my opinion, this is one of the best looking RAM out there. To learn more about the Extreme ARGB memory, follow the link in the video description. Okay, so a few weeks ago I decided to make a poll to learn which video you guys would like to see the most, and due to a popular demand, today we're comparing the FX9590, 8350, and 6300. We're going to have a look at how these CPUs perform at stock, overclocked, and of course we're going to be checking out their thermals, and power consumption. For the system specs, as always, we're using a 990FXA UD3 Revision 4 motherboard, a Zalman CNPS 14X CPU cooler, 16GB of DDR3 1866MHz memory, an EVGA GTX 1070 graphics card, and a 700W FSP Hydro power supply. Alright, first let's have a quick look at Cinebench R15, and these results really shouldn't be surprising. The FX 9590 is obviously the fastest processor here, outperforming both the FX 8350 and 6300 by 13 and 18% respectively in single core, while for the multi-core test it is 13 and 74% ahead. I also decided to include Corona results since we're going to be comparing the power consumption numbers that I got using the software later on. Moving on to gaming, let's begin with Forza Horizon 4, and using lowest settings, we see the FX 9590 unsurprisingly pulling ahead. Compared to its lower clocked sibling, we're only seeing a small increase of roughly 10%, Though comparing it to the FX 6300, the difference can range from 35 all the way up to 50% due to the frame time inconsistencies that the 6 core part has. Using ultra settings, margins are identical between the 8 core models, though compared to the FX 6300, the 9590 can now be up to 64% faster in some areas. Next up, we have Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, where the world's first 5 GHz CPU is around 6 to 9% faster compared to the FX 8350, while comparing it to the 6300, it is delivering around 23% more frames. Once we start driving, though, we can see both 8 core processors performing significantly better, and now the difference between the FX 9590 and 6300 can be as big as 35%, not to mention the noticeably more consistent frame times of the 8 core models. Using high settings, margins are pretty much identical, though with two extra cores and higher clock speeds, the FX 8350 and 9590 deliver a much better experience because the performance hit using higher settings isn't as noticeable thanks to the higher frame rate. Next, we have Call of Duty Warzone, where the FX 9590 has an 8-15% advantage over the lower clocked part and is 30-40% to faster compared to the FX 6300. Next on the list is Watch Dogs Legion, and there really isn't much in it between the 9590 and 8350. We're talking about a 5-7% to difference in favor of the 220W CPU, though when compared to the 6-core part, the 9590 is delivering roughly 58% more frames. As we've seen before, using higher settings doesn't impact performance at all in this game, meaning that margins are basically the same. 
Finally, we have Rainbow Six Siege, where the FX 9590 beats the 6 core FX by around 30 to 35 percent, though it is only about 5 to 7 percent faster compared to the FX 8350 using lowest settings. When it comes to higher settings, margins remain the same between the 8 core parts, though this time the FX 9590 is delivering around 22 to 32 percent more frames compared to the FX 6300. I also want you to pay attention to the CPU usage, because even though most of these games are still playable on the 6-core FX, it is basically on the verge of maxing out, which is not an issue for the 8-core parts, and if you've seen my previous videos, you should be aware that having extra headroom is always good, since a fully utilized CPU might cause issues such as stuttering, communication problems using Discord or the in-game voice chat, etc. Looking at temperatures, we see the expected results, so there is not much to talk about here. The FX 6300 obviously runs the coolest, and is much easier to maintain, while the 9590 runs the hottest, but even then it isn't necessarily that hard to cool this beast down like many claim. Also, you might have noticed that the FX 9590 runs a bit hotter here compared to the previous video, and the reason for that is the cheap thermal paste I had to use since I ran out of the Cooler Master one that I used in my review. One thing I'd like to point out is the massive increase in temperatures when moving from the FX 8350 to the 9590, especially when it comes to VRM temps, even though the latter is only 5-15% to faster, so if you're using an FX 9590, you really want to make sure that you have plenty of airflow in your case, or at least have a single fan that cools down the VRMs. When it comes to power consumption at idle, all three of them consume the same, though once they get fully utilized, you will definitely notice a difference at the end of the month. The FX 8350 consumes 39% more power than the 6-core part, which isn't too bad considering it is 35% faster using Corona. Things don't look as good for the FX 9590 because it consumes 50% more power than its lower clocked brother for a very small performance increase of 10%, making it one of the least efficient processors to ever exist. I mean, just look at the power consumption of the 5950X. It consumes the same amount as the R7 5800X, even though the Ryzen 9 has twice the amount of cores and threads. I really wish AMD did something similar with the FX 9590, but unfortunately, this is what we got instead. Okay, so now let's move on to my favorite part, and probably everybody else's as well, which is overclocking. Both FX 8350 and 6300 have the same CPU and RAM overclocks, which are 4.6 GHz and 2044 MHz respectively. The north bridge frequency on the FX 8350 is a bit higher at 2409 MHz, while with the 6-core part I was only able to reach 2190 MHz. When it comes to the FX 9590, it has the same RAM and NB overclocks as the 8350, while the CPU frequency is locked at 4.7 GHz. Please keep in mind that this is as much as I could push each CPU, and trying to go any further would either result in thermal throttling or make the system unstable. Looking at Cinebench R15, we can see that both the FX 8350 and 6300 have the same single core, which isn't surprising since both processors are clocked the same, while the FX 9590 is just 3% ahead. When it comes to the multi-core results, the 9590 is now ahead the FX 6300 and 8350 by 36 and just 2% respectively. When it comes to gaming results, it should be obvious that the 8-core parts are going to be within a couple of percent of each other, so I'm going to focus on the FX 6300. The amount of performance increase that you're getting by overclocking this thing is nothing short of impressive, and it is just crazy how close it gets to the 8-core models. 
Now, it may seem like it is basically on par with the other two in some games, which might make you think that those titles don't take advantage of extra cores, yet that is not entirely true. Take PUBG for instance, which is considered to be a single-threaded title where the difference between the 6 and 8 core models is basically negligible when running around. Though once we start driving, we can see that not only do the higher core count processors pull further ahead in terms of frame rate, but they're also delivering a noticeably more consistent experience. The same goes for a lot of other games as well, such as Apex Legends and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In simpler situations, you probably won't be able to tell the difference between the 6 and 8 core models, Though, once you get into a more intensive area or situation, you'll definitely notice that the 8-core part delivers a smoother experience. This can happen regardless of CPU utilization, regardless of whether the game released in 2013 or 2021, and whether a game is considered to be single-threaded or GPU intensive. Simply put, results may vary depending on where you're looking at or the situation you're in, and this is something that a lot of reviewers don't talk about. Unfortunately, some even refuse to believe that more cores can result in more consistent frame times. This can be further proven by comparing stock 8 core to the overclocked 6 core, and while the core count isn't directly comparable between processors because of architectural differences, this is something that also applies to other CPUs as well. Looking at CPU temperatures, we can see that the FX6300 and 9590 have very similar temps for some reason, while the FX8350 is a few degrees cooler, even though it is clocked the same as the 6-core part. The VRM temps are as expected though, we have 104 degrees for the 9590, 83 degrees for the 8350, and 68 degrees Celsius for the 6300. Now, I should mention that we could push both the 8350 and 6300 an extra 100 to 200 megahertz further if we had a better CPU cooler, especially the 6 core part, since we still have a decent amount of temperature headroom. Sadly, the same cannot be said about our 220 watt processor, and I have a feeling that even adding an extra 50 MHz to the CPU frequency would cause the VRMs to start throttling. Lastly, we have power consumption, and as always, the idle numbers are very identical, though under load we can see that the increase isn't small. The overclocked FX6300 now consumes the same as stock FX8350, while the overclocked 8350 is right behind the 9590. So, there you have it. And you might ask yourself, what's the point of this video? Didn't FX release 10 years ago? But believe it or not, there are still plenty of people who buy used AMD FX processors to upgrade from a lower-end model, and there are also those who want to build or buy an AMD FX-based system for one reason or another. In case you're one of those people, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you to avoid the 9590 because even at stock, it needs to be paired with a high-end motherboard with robust VRMs. So unless you know what you're getting into, I don't think it's worth the hassle. I'd rather go for an 8350 or 8370. They're still quite capable, much easier to work with, and can be easily overclocked to reach 9590 levels of performance, as we saw in today's video. You just need to have an 8 plus 2 phase motherboard with a VRM heatsink, and need to make sure that the power phases aren't overheating, otherwise your 8-core FX is most likely going to have a hard time beating a dual-core Pentium. When it comes to the FX6300, I just can't stress enough how impressed I am by the CPU. I legitimately believe that this is one of the best processors you could get in the last decade, and it's kinda upsetting because it never got enough credit. Remember, this is a $130 processor from 2012, and while it might struggle in a lot of modern AAA titles, the fact that it held up for so long is absolutely mind-blowing, especially when compared to the CPU it competed with, the i3-3240. And in case you haven't seen my comparison of these two CPUs yet, feel free to check it out in the card at the top right corner. 
Either way, that's been it. As always, if you found this video interesting, you know what to do. And feel free to support my work by using Amazon affiliate links for your personal purchases provided in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.